named after the bloody-handed lord of the flesh terrors from whom they are descended. The children of Seth are a chapter infamous for the murderously violent and destructive manner by which their wars are waged. Hailing from the harsh desert world of Atom, the children of Seth have carved themselves deep into the annals of the imperial history, each page dripping with the blood of their foes. Cast in the image of the savagely violent flesh terrors, the children of Seth are a brutal chapter forged in the blistering dunes of Atom, a feral world steeped in a culture of death and rebirth. Though the children are unshakably loyal to the Imperium, their homeworld has had a rather dark history of treachery, which is rumored to be the reason the chapter was set up on the world so rapidly. Before the establishment of the children of Seth, Atom fell into the dark embrace of the ruinous powers. Despite their primitive bronze weapons, the residents of the desert world tore apart the local PDF, sacrificing them in vile rituals to bring forth their gods hoping to spread their cancerous influence through the stars. To say that the Imperium's response was swift and brutal would be an understatement. Descending like the fist of murderous guard, the flesh terrors led by the chapter master Gabriel Seth smashed into traitorous Atumians, butchering all who stood before them with a bloodthirsty zeal. Even as the sons of Nasser Amit ripped through the treasonous natives, those few who had not joined their corrupted brethren and thus been forced to vanish into the scorching deserts returned with a vengeance. Full of murderous fury at the treachery of their fellows, they joined the flesh terrors and annihilated the traitors with a murderous rage that impressed even their Astartes allies. During the suppression of Atom's rebellion, word began trickling in of the Loyalists' native reverence for the Flesh Terrors and their unfathomable hatred for those who had fallen to the whispers of chaos. It was an obvious choice where a new chapter should be founded and, as a reward for its surviving population's unflagging loyalty to the God Emperor, who the natives and later the children of Seth refer to as the Imperishable, Atom was made into an Astartes homeworld. In an attempt to harness the bloodthirsty fury of the flesh terrors, the Imperium used some of the pure gene seed tithed to them by the warriors of Cretacea. It seemed originally that they had succeeded. The children of Seth seemed at first to be much like the blood angels of old. The twin curses seemed to be under their control, absent were the bestial cannibalistic rituals of the flesh eaters or the blood drinkers' barbaric indulgence of the red thirst. Time would prove this image to be false, for the children of Seth were very much born in the image of their homeworld and progenitor both. Like the scorching sands of Atom, they could be still and silent, but just like those dunes, they could be whipped into a terrible fury in an instant, for the blood-mad rage of Nasser Ahmed flowed through them. When a massive blood crusade, comprised of an exceptionally large and brutal war host, comprised of several world eaters warbounds and blood cultist followers, invades the Hadronian Wall subsector of the Alaris sector, located adjacent to the Cadian sector, the entire Children of Seth chapter takes up arms against these renegade forces. They are a part of a joint imperial crusade, comprised of several bellicose scions of sanguineous chapters, including the Bloodbearers, Crimson Sentinels, Golden Seraphs, and Sanguine Berserkers. Those worlds that had fallen beneath the bloody shadow of the Blood God's followers were reserved the greatest measure of the chapters of the Blood, who granted them no quarter and no mercy. The full role taken by this independent Astartes battle group is impossible to collate. Nevertheless, the fragmented accounts of the various battles that took place in the Hadronian Wall subsector are extant in the scattered records of the era. Some list no more than a chapter's name and where they were signed during this conflict, while other records offer a glimpse into the many savage wars fought between both sides, as several independent imperial strike forces often fought the savage corn-worshipping warbands to near mutual annihilation. Though this subsector was eventually cleared of the foul presence of chaos, the destruction wrought by those dedicated to the Blood God's service and the science of the Sanguinius affected the infrastructure of several of these worlds, some of which are still struggling to rebuild to this day. Like all descendants of the Blood Angels, the genetic flaws known as the Black Rage and Red Thirst are present in the gene seed of the children of Seth. And, much like their parent chapter, the Flesh Terrors, the flaws are more exaggerated than in other sons of Sanguinius. 
Unlike the Cretacean cousins, however, the Black Rage manifests as a calm, tranquil serenity. The calm before the storm, as the children of Seth call it. For when unleashed onto the battlefield, those suffering from the dark madness are as brutal and vicious as the sandstorms that rack the vast dunes of their homeworld. Much like those brutal storms, however, the Black Rage can settle, and the brother may return to sanity. But he is not free, for inevitably, just as a storm settles, it will return, each time more violent and potentially fatal than the last. Like the vast majority of Space Marines, the Children of Seth's Chapter Command is organized in general compliance with the tenets of the Codex Astartes. However, thanks to demonic incursion by Rotica's Rainfather and his Nerglite Horde, as well as general casualties caused by the Black Rage and Red Thirst, the current Chapter Master, Rama Anubian, was drawn from the ranks of the Sanguinary Priests. As the culture of Atom heavily has influenced the Children of Seth, so too have the more archaic parts of the world's devotion to the Emperor. Many positions, Death Company, Sanguinary Priests, and Sanguinary Guard, or Shapti, as they are known within the chapter, to name a few, now bear helmets modelled in the likeness of several of the spirits the Atumians worship as aspects of the God Emperor. While strange to outsiders, those more learned of the culture of Atom realize that these decorations are an internal and more private manner for Battle Brothers to easily identify each other. An example of this is the Sanguinary Priests, and, in a break from tradition, the current Chapter Master, all of whom bear a cold, black jackal-headed helmet, made in resemblance to the one who judges and guides faithful souls into the Imperishable's Paradise, much like how they guide those who would be children of Seth into Astartes' hood, as well as prepare their body for the changes to come. Due to the morbid death-focused culture of Atom, the Librarium are organized into the more macabre mortuary cults, which, with the intense oversight of the chaplaincy, appear to engage in necromancy warcraft that, though it manages to avoid the dark rituals of chaos, veers alarmingly close. Examples of this include the ancient chapter relic, the Book of the Dead. When they go to war, the children of Seth are much like the sandstorms of Atom, horrifyingly brutal, ripping through all that stands before them. For, as Gabriel Seth once stated, the sons of Sanguinius each represent an aspect of their father's spirit. The flesh terrors his battle savagery, the lamenters his tragic nobility, and the children of Seth themselves are the terrifying manifestation of his vengeful wrath. Much to the arrogant consternation of the chapter's greatest enemy, Imatek, the children of Seth almost completely eschew tactics of any sort. They are the blade that tears, a weapon of bloody retribution, a roaring horde of frenzied annihilators, each utterly dedicated to the slaughter of their foes. Despite their long and brutal history with their ancient foe Imatek and the Necron species as a whole, service in the Death Watch is generally treated with disinterest. Though they sent their required tithe, they often do so irregularly, and, several times, have needed to be rather forcibly reminded by threat from the Order of Astartes. Even though the chapter as a whole is generally uncaring about the Death Watch, the Battle Brothers sent to serve in the Order of Zenus have seen it as a glorious period of service to the Imperishable.